let's get get back to the conversation here I'm having with George Msomali, who's a security expert. We have been following step by step how things have been unraveling since Friday. Ordinarily, uh, because you've said that the police have failed on this one, ordinarily, how would we have expected them to handle this? Uh, the proper way of handling this, Akisa, would have been, uh, this is a senior person that has been reported missing. And in all police uh, stations, we have records of missing persons that have been reported. So anybody that is found, which is unidentified, is supposed also to be circulated within the police system, the communication system, whereby family members will be called and informed that there is a body that actually resembles, because nobody can tell me they did not have the picture of Chris Musando. And it's very easy for me to compare a picture of you and you and say, yes, this is actually, there, are, there is some kind of resemblance. And the family could have been informed that uh, the body has been moved to the city mortuary. They go and identify the body. Uh, it seems this did not happen. And it brings to picture what happened in 1975. The body of J.M. Karaoke was picked somewhere in Gong Forest. It was taken to the city mortuary. It took the family members to sneak into the mortuary to do the identification. Yet the body had been booked in by the police. We're still operating a police service that does not seem to learn with time. And I think it's very unfortunate that from Saturday when the body was discovered, nobody tried to identify the body uh, positively until today, midday, this is when the family is being called and told that probably they were even told we have a body that we suspect to be of your family member, of your kin. And that is how they ended up now going to the city mortuary and positively identifying the body. And in most cases, all these areas, for example, where the body was found, is supposed to be treated as a scene of crime. I've not been there, I don't know where it is, but how was the scene handled? You see, already the vehicle has been mishandled because it's, it has crucial evidence, it has crucial information that can actually help in, in identifying the perpetrators of that uh, murder. But now the way it was handled, clearly crucial uh, uh, evidence has been lost. Yeah, Brings ba us back to Jacob Juma. The same thing happened. The vehicle was found at the scene of crime. It was not cordoned off as it's supposed to be done professionally, but it was towed to the police station. And during that process, we lost very crucial information. Up to date, nobody knows who killed Jacob Juma. Now we've done the same thing. Are we not learning anything from uh, this, uh, this, 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 uh, this incident that they happen? So I believe proper communication should have been given out, should have gone out through the police uh, system. And probably by Saturday, this body could have been positively identified, not getting the body on Saturday and then identifying it on Monday. Mm -hmm. Clearly there is a gap. So why was this gap? Was it intentional? That is now the question that will come. Was it by design? Yeah? Did people know something that they did not want the public to know? Has it come to that extent whereby now we are being told that, uh, yes, the body is of Chris Musando mm -hmm. and uh, history bears with me because remember, I've talked about uh, Tom Boyer, Dr. Robert Ouko, we were told he was where? He had gone to Zambia, yet the body had already been, I, I, it, uh, the body had already been found and positively identified. Mm -hmm. Are we looking at the same scenario here? Okay. So who is trying to cover what? All that right. is the question now that comes into Let's mind. go back to the city mortuary. We'll definitely be coming back to that. Let's go back to the city mortuary where our news editor, um, Abdi Osman is now joining us by way of phone. Abdi, just uh, minutes ago, we saw the body of uh, Chris Msando being transferred from that mortuary. Do we know where it is being taken and when probably the autopsy procedure will be conducted? Well, it looks uh, that Akisa, the IBC officials did not elaborate where the body was heading because that was the same time they were giving the media briefing, which we aired live, as you remember, and they outlined their fears about the safety of officials calling mm. for the same to be boosted. Uh, but more importantly, it is that uh, after that, we met family members and they seemed shocked and they say it's only after this that they will try and gather and get their arrangements ready. So everything happened in a half. An ambulance arrived as the media was trying to get pictures and cover shots of the officials who were here. Subsequently, what happened was that the body was put into that ambulance and left the scene. We will perhaps get after this to know where the body has been taken. 
But what we do know so far is that on Friday, Chris Sando, the ICT manager of the IEBC, went missing. And then subsequently thereafter, that subsequently thereafter, he, he, his family came to the media to address that issue and saying that it should be treated with the seriousness it deserves. We carried the story yesterday, and the family saying now is when they're getting to hear that the body was actually found on Saturday. The IBC has called for the security of officials to be to be boosted, and therefore. What we are going to hear from the IBC after this will perhaps guide us in terms of just where the body has been taken. Well, Abdi, being that the body has now been transferred from uh, the city mortuary, I would like to think that uh, the buzz of activity that was there a few hours ago has uh, gone down. Who's there? What are they saying? What are the city mortuary attendants saying? Well, this was a gathering of the curious, a gathering of the worried, and a gathering of the bereaved just a while ago. Uh, there was such a huge gathering. There was little space in the parking lot, only police officers manning that area. And inside the compound of the city mortuary, we had a huge crowd of people, many of them family members of uh, the Msando family. Uh, but right now, as we speak, it's back to the business that has always been a quiet, dreary, sad business at the mortuary. There are no people here except the houses that are parked outside and the staff in their uniforms moving about and getting on with their daily lives. Chris Sander was just one of the many bodies that was brought here to the city mortuary. It's been picked and perhaps taken to another funeral home ahead of the post-mortem. But the questions will linger long after the crowds have left the city mortuary. The IBC has demanded immediate investigations that will come to the conclusion of this brutal and tragic murder. The body was found in Kikuyu. Nobody knows where he was killed. The vehicle was recovered. Nobody knows how long he was in the vehicle. All we do know is that at one point, cameras, part of the closed-circuit television cameras that hover above our road, had captured him along Mombasa Road. Subsequently thereafter, the questions will always permeate the air. The answers are not yet there, and everybody is still waiting. It has actually raised a lot of tension, given the prominent role he had at the ICT section of the IEBC. But the body will now undergo a post-mortem. Answers will be sought, and everyone will be hopefully waiting for the answers that have been long sought since the disappearance of Chris and Sando on Saturday. Body found on Friday, body found on Saturday. Uh, the event, at least, that we aired live here of the IEBC, making their fears known on the family, grieving their loved ones, was today on Monday. Many questions in a few days' span. A few days to the elections, we're all waiting. KTN News will keep you updated. And as soon as we get word from the IEBC, we will keep you informed. Abdi, thank you very much for that update. Abdi Osman is our news editor saying that uh, um, the activities uh, at the city mortuary have slowed down after the body of Chris Sander was transferred to another funeral home. We're still trying to get details of where his body has been taken, when the autopsy procedure will be undertaken as well. And Abdi Osman is just among those on the ground who are trying to piece together all the information we can get with regard to the death of Chris Sando, who's the deputy director of ICT at uh, the um, with the IEBC, a man who was expected to play a very critical role on August the 8th during the electioneering uh, period. Now, let's get back to the conversation. You have given examples of how the police handled this particular situation and how this has panned out with previous cases. Is this a sign that we will really never get to know what killed Chris Msando? Uh, I don't want to speculate on that because the, the police have already promised investigations. 
uh, I hope this time round they'll be able to unravel this because in the previous cases we've never got anybody arrested and arraigned in court for that murder. And uh, that is why we still feel we might not get to the bottom of this going by the way things have been handled. And uh, this is one case of uh, Chris Musando who is a prominent Kenyan. But if you look at the way the police handle dead bodies that have been discovered out there, it's always a routine to them. Collect the body, take it to the city mortuary, and then forget about it. There are no efforts made to identify uh, the key of the uh, killed person or the bodies that have been discovered. Uh, I had an incident where my brother-in-law was picked along Kilimani and taken to the city mortuary. We had to go looking for him all over before finding the body in uh, at the city mortuary, and we were told it had been booked in by the police. And I think the police need to do something about this. These bodies that are being picked out, they have relatives, people who are looking for them. They should be circulating this information. A body has been discovered somewhere so that people know. And uh, I believe that if that is done, so many cases of murder will be, will, will, will be solved. But uh, I'm not uh, a pessimist. Let's give the police a benefit of mm, doubt. A benefit of doubt. Let's give them a benefit of doubt. But from my experience, I believe a lot of uh, evidence has been interfered with, especially with the moving of the car and also the moving of the bodies. I don't know how the bodies were handled from Kikuyu to the city mortuary. So, they hold crucial information that can actually assist in identifying the perpetrators of that crime. So even with, with this goofs that you say the police have uh, gone through with handling this particular case, mm -hmm. how do you expect them to handle themselves mm -hmm. in the coming days, even as investigations continue with circumstances surrounding the death of Chris Msando? I think they, are, they have ways of knowing exactly where Chris was and at what time. They have mobile data that they can use to know, actually try and trace the movements. Uh, who are the last people that he talked to? We have the CCTV system. Yeah. Is it functioning? Uh, now these are the question now. Because if you are talking about the vehicle being seen last on Mombasa Road, yet we have this coverage all over. Until now we have been told the vehicle was found in Roisambu. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that where every other place that this vehicle was passing, the CCTV system was not working? We've invested a lot of money in that. And I think if they have this evidence, this is what can actually assist them in knowing exactly who he met and where and what happened thereafter. But uh, with Kenya, we sometimes just say, okay, it will pass. All right. And Time Kenyans will tell. Time, Time will, will tell. tell. We'll see how this goes. George, thank you for coming and helping us analyze a number of the things that have come out of the circumstances surrounding the death of Chris Msando. George Msamali is a security expert. We end our coverage of that, but of course I will be handing it over to our Swahili team with Mbioya KTN, who will continue to give you as much information as they can on this developing story. My name is Akisa Wandera. Thank you for being with us since 1 p.m., even as we have been giving you live transmission, live coverage of the discovery or uh, the confirmation of the death of Chris Msando. The IABC commissioners making their way there. We are also expecting a statement to come uh, from the police. The family is distraught. The family is shocked, uh, disappointed, and sad. So this is something we continue to cover. With just a week to go to the election, the role that Chris Msando was expected to play cannot uh, be ignored. Hence, uh, the prominence that we give this particular case. My name is Akisa Wandera. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your your afternoon. I hand you over now to Mbiwia Katie and Tim, who will be coming in at the top of the hour. Thank you so much.